So my name is uh, Anne Flore Maman. As you can see on the slides, I have a double hat. Oops, sorry. I'll take that with me. Um, I, uh, I'm at the same time academic director, director at TSEC Business School, so on all the campuses here in Singapore, but also in France and Morocco. So I do a research and I teach. And, um, and I also have my own uh, consulting company, uh, of course, uh, which is based on my area of expertise coming from the research area. So what I will present today is actually something very interesting because it's the first time that it happens to me that um, a consortium of companies, which is called Traveler Made, actually asked me whether I could make an academic research, uh, not for them, but you know, so they would support then, for example, paying the flight you know, up to there. Um, so that they, they would have uh, the results of, for something they wanted to define, which is a new concept in the tourism industry and in the luxury industry, um, but in a more scientific way than just doing it, you know, empirically with uh, what they think uh, would be uh, this concept. So um, we started the reflection, you know, um, so what I will present is what we call haute villégiature. So it are going to be a lot of French words here, because when we speak haute, we speak French. So, um, so that's, that's the idea. So um, we all know, I'm pretty sure you all know uh, what we call haute couture, which is high fashion, so those very uh, uh, extravagant way of dressing up, uh, quite unbearable in the streets in some cases, especially the one on the bottom. Um, but uh, maybe you have also uh, knowledge, I'm sure, about high jewelry, so haute jewelry or haute horlogerie, huh? high watch industry. Probably you are less uh, familiar with uh, what we call haute cuisine, top left, so haute cooking, uh, haute chocolaterie, high chocolating, I don't know how to translate that, or haute pâtisserie, so high uh, dessert, or even we have in France haute coiffure, so high air dressing. So uh, the idea is, uh, you understand my point, is like in all um, industries which um, are related to some extent to some kind of experience and artistic uh, design, uh, some people have pushed you know, the uh, product to a very specific limit which is uh, embedded in this concept of, uh, of high whatever. So what has happened in the um, travel industry, um, empirically, uh, it's coming from professionals, uh, they have experienced quite a number of changes. Uh, for example, the fact that you have new actors in the area which call themselves, who call themselves travel designers. Okay, so they design uh, trips which might be including, you know, more than 200,000 euros. So you, that's uh, 300, more than 300,000 Singapore dollars per week. Okay, so I speak uh, very high numbers. Um, they provide bespoke services. They um, often, sometimes, uh, well, not for the travel designers, but if you think about hotels like Kempinski or the Ritz or uh, Savoy, they have sometimes some pop-up concepts, okay, where they have uh, a suit, for example, which is redesigned in, uh, um, I don't remember which hotel did that, but they did that for Gatsby, uh, the great Gatsby in New York, but you also had for James Bond in uh, one suit. Uh, uh, that was in Panama. So, I mean, they, they, you know, they, they have some pop-up concepts, so limited editions. And um, there is more and more focus on uh, also uh, not providing uh, a room uh, in a hotel or a trip uh, in Africa, uh, but it would be more about an experience that you want to deliver to people um, with specific encounters. I was uh, chatting at lunch uh, with people saying that, for example, uh, there was this... Uh, this guy who, uh, who knew that his client was a fan of golf, okay, so he had booked a trip for him in a golf resort, but the surprise was that what, that was on arrival, Tiger Woods was, he was here to play golf with him. Okay, so here you reach a certain level which is not normal, you know, in the tourism industry. So that's, that's what they, they say, that there would be uh, the emergence of some kind of an old concept in the tourism industry, in the travel industry, I'm not responsible for the world, okay? They call that haute villégiature. Alors, villégiature is a French word which is encompassing both the stay plus the trip, because as you will see in the sample I will present, uh, I have people who, for example, organize, you know, a round trip around the world in, um, in uh, planes. Uh, so it's encompassing several things and it's actually coming from uh, uh, the Grand Tour that was existing in the 19th century in the UK, where you had those very well-seen noble people traveling all across Europe 
to experience, you know, places, people, and uh, buy things at the same time. So uh, the idea was, well, if we have this uh, concept, I mean, we at some point we have to define it. So that was uh, the key question. So the question was really to uh, define this new concept of haute villégiature. What would we put uh, in that? From I insist on that from a, a professional perspective. Okay, there is no consumer perspective, which is the limit here. Um, the method that I suggested was to uh, conduct what we call a Delphi study. I'm not sure whether you are familiar. I'm going to explain a little bit what it is. But basically, it's when you, you don't have um, uh, any idea about a topic or you want to predict something or you, to, to, you want to reach some kind of consensus around the definition. So you're going to uh, really head at people who are knowledgeable about that. And you are going to conduct a series of, uh, of, uh, of uh, qualitative, because it's qualitative research, even though we conduct statistics to understand what we have. But it's a very uh, uh, non-mathematical statistics, I would say. Um, so uh, to, uh, well, I will explain what it is. So basically, the objective of the Delphi study, as I told you, is to obtain a reliable rep response to a problem that we have uh, from a group of geographically dispersed people. That's very important and uh, experts who have no interaction with one another. So there should not be any interaction in between them. So data collection is a series of questionnaires that you send by email. So you send a first uh, uh, questionnaire. So where you say, for example, I proposed, OK, if you had to define haute villégiature, so the equivalent of haute couture for travel and tourism, I had to explain. Um, I mean, uh, how much do you agree with the following statements? You know, what would that be? So you give a list of statements and people have to, um, to, to say how much they agree on a scale. Usually it's from 1 to 10, 10 that, you, that you use as a scale. Uh, so you have uh, this uh, questionnaire and, and then you are going to uh, compute a couple of statistics and you are going to resend the questionnaire to people with the results uh, statistical results that you got, and you ask them whether they want to change or not their score. Okay, and you do that until you reach some, some consensus on, um, on the replies. And of course, you keep only the replies with a high score then at the end of the day. Uh, so to, to make the, 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 as I was saying, the non-mathematical stats, you actually uh, compute uh, measures of central tendency and level of dispersion. I don't want to be technical, but basically it's just to ensure that you are, uh, I mean, you want to understand what is the average and median scores, and you want to understand how, how you are going to define this consensus that you are looking after. Um, this was uh, my panel of experts. Uh, so it was a panel of 18 uh, people spread out uh, as you can see, you have people from all around the world here. Uh, they all have high position in specific categories in the tourism industry. So you can find lodges in Africa, uh, destination managers, uh, hotels. I actually had LVMH. Uh, it doesn't show up here, but it's, uh, it's Cheval Blanc. So There's a hotel uh, part for LVMH. Uh, Michel Rebier is La Réserve in Paris, which is one of the most exceptional hotels that you have in Paris. So hotels, member agencies, so travel agencies, but those who design, you know, the travel designers, private jets, and uh, private yachts. Okay, so quite a, a sample, uh, eclectic sample. Given the position that they had, um, well, that gave you also the age, you know, um, that they have. But I mean, when you aim at looking at experts, you don't, I mean, you want people who have some kind of expertise uh, in their areas. So it's years of experience uh, here. Um, so that's a quite a, a number of, uh, I mean, quite an interesting. I also checked um, whether they were luxury consumers or not, um, because I thought it was important for me. It's very hard for someone who doesn't have any uh, habit as a luxury consumer to even understand what haute couture, you know, can really be. So, I mean, um, something for haute villégiature, I felt it was an important criteria. Two wanted to remain anonymous. That's why you have crosses. <laughs> Um, alors, to build the questionnaire, it was actually quite difficult because the idea was initially to provide people with a list of statements. So usually when you want to provide this list of statements, you use the literature, right, to provide the statements. The problem is that when you look at the literature on haute couture and whatsoever, it's very, very scarce. Very scarce in our area. In social sciences, it's very scarce. You have a lot of in history, maybe a little bit of sociology, anthropology, but in, in business science, it's very scarce. So I found thing on haute cuisine. I don't know why people, I mean, focused on high cooking. Uh, probably because they are French. I don't know. 
But um, what was interesting in oat, in oat uh, cooking is that um, the research, I mean, it was all about the fact that you had some codes and institutions associated with the concept of oat, something that you find again in the other ones, um, that you have some kind of know-how, specific know-how uh, in, uh, in cooking, and uh, that the, she, the, the, the chef uh, personality is super important. So it's not really the food, but it's more the personality of the chef. Um, that um, a high cooking um, haute cuisine uh, restaurant would be a trendsetter and uh, would, would uh, leave a major image in the industry, would be creative and innovative, and um, would uh, focus on the experience which is being delivered beyond the dish. Okay, that's why we have the decoration you know, in the plate. With the name of surprising unique clients and working with passion. Um, and, sorry, there is a typo, uh, it's um, only for elite and expert consumers. So if you're not an expert in cooking, don't go. Uh, alors, haute coiffure, no literature. So I, I actually went uh, to check the uh, chambre syndicale de la haute coiffure, because we have that, so it's some kind of um, institution. We finally get the concept of institution, and I checked the criteria. Okay, how would they define whether a hairdresser is haute coiffure or not? So it would be about artistic, art, creation. So we find again the notion of creation, about highest quality standards, collections per year, like uh, in uh, haute couture, two collections per year, for, and you have a catwalk of, uh, of uh, hair as well. Um, it's about know-how, codes that you have to master. So a little bit like in, uh, in the clothes, you know, you have to master a different type of, uh, of cut. Uh, you have to master the wedding dress. Yeah, you know, there are things that you have to do. Same thing, they have codes in haute coiffure. And they call themselves maison. Okay, so that was also common with haute, uh, haute couture. So haute couture, again, there is not that much, um, that much uh, literature, but still you find again the idea of codes and criteria, which are defined in France by the Chambre syndicale de la haute couture this time. Uh, to be uh, eligible to be haute couture, you actually have to be nominated by the uh, French president. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, published in the official journal by the president. Uh, we find the notion of elite, as we had for haute cuisine, as consumers, symbolic meaning, bespoke, made to measure, quality of the label, so we find again the know-how, um, and uh, also the significant label cost, which was quite uh, an important variable. When we looked at haute joaillery and haute horlogerie, again, uh, I think there is a, a void here again in our area for literature, uh, so I went to the uh, Fédération de la Haute Horlogerie uh, in Switzerland to check what were the criteria, and uh, they focused on excellence, tradition and innovation, legacy, know-how, and identity. So you see we find you know, some similarities and some new things. So based on all that, I, uh, so I even went for haute cuisine into reading the book by Karem, you know, who defined the rules of cooking a couple of centuries ago. It was very insightful. Um, but the idea is that based on all that, um, I came up with 17 statements uh, that would be uh, transferable, let's say, to the tourism industry. So, for example, one statement could be uh, um, an actor of haute villégiature could call himself Maison. Okay, that was that one, one example of a statement. So that was 17 statements. I send these uh, statements to the to the panel. I ask them to say, uh, you know, to, to say on a scale from one to ten whether they would agree or not, and I also uh, ask them to put comments, qualitative comments. And from the qualitative comments, I built new items for the second round of the questionnaire. That's why in the second round you had 29 statements. People came up with new ideas about what it, what it could be, you know, things which were not in the literature. And third round, only three rounds, um, because saturation was reached very uh, fast, actually, uh, people didn't change mind. They were like kind of blocked on their position. Uh, um, I had uh, 21 statements suppressing those who had already consensus, consensus sorry, after round two. Alors, for the consensus, okay, this is the rule I used, which is a standard, I mean, there are several rules, I use this one. Um, we can discuss it if you want afterwards, but basically you compute the median and you check at the number, the percentage of respondents that you have, either at this median or at one integer from this median. And this is uh, the results uh, that I got. Uh, which I think is the most important. So as you can see here, you've got the mean, uh, the median, 
And I only kept, of course, the type of consensus and uh, items which had a median which was above 8 out of 10. Okay, this is arbitrary choice, but if I included 7, I would actually have my, twen my 29 uh, items. So it was too many and not uh, very uh, relevant. So I don't want to read the table. I think it's boring. So I, I decided I would present more in the shape of a story. So I said, uh, what, is, what would be haute villégiature? It would be about designing and delivering travel experiences. So it's not only about design, it's also about retail to some extent. Uh, with the highest quality standards by highly knowledgeable people who are experts in their business and led by passion. Each maison, so they would agree with the term maison actually, uh, has its own style and personality. All are creative and innovative to surprise and exceed their cli clients' expectations. Clients are unique and have specific expectations, again. The overall objective of haute villégiature would be to, wow, to be a wow factor in the travel industry. There was no notion of uh, legacy or trend setting or that kind of thing. It was really this idea of wow. So that was the findings from, uh, from the study. Um, I uh, did, you know, the traditional check that you have for qualitative research. Uh, of course, we have some limits to the, to the, result, to the study. If the sample is, is quite small, but it's a traditional you know, limit that you have with Delphi study. You cannot do that on 300 people. My main problem was the saturation. I really had saturation very fast. Three rounds is very little, uh, but people were not changing. So, you know, there was no point. Uh, uh, so that's why I think it would be interesting as a future steps to, um, to actually, um, well, for, for us, uh, maybe probably define some scales to measure the items that I found. Uh, because when you speak about the highest quality standard, for example, in tourism, what would that be, you know, practically speaking? Uh, and duplicate this study with t other stakeholders, for example, the clients and influencers. So right now I'm actually doing that with influencers, so with journalists and bloggers in, in the tourism industry. Um, to be transparent with you, it doesn't work very well uh, because they have a very biased uh, reasoning based on how much they have been invited to places. <laughs> So, uh, well, it's a kind of a limit, but still, it's still a good indicator, you know. It's, uh, um, and uh, from practitioners, uh, I mean, I think that it's what I did is quite interesting, but it's, it's very uh, philosophical to some extent. So I think it's very important for them not to define what would be their chambre syndicale de la haute villégiature, if we want to call it uh, at the same way. So basically, uh, define some kind of list of really criteria you know, like if you want to apply to be haute villégiature or if you want to be nominated as being haute villégiature, what exactly, which criteria should you respect and in which way? That's why I think that us researchers, we have, you know, interesting things to do in terms of scales of measurement to help those guys. Also monitor the evolution of the criteria because maybe in 10 years uh, it will be a little bit different. And, um, and refine the criteria with qualitative studies having a client-centric approach but to be transparent with you, it's very difficult to approach those clients because when you pay 100,000 euro your week, you don't want to have a researcher with you asking you questions. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a limitation. Um, what is uh, interesting is that in the process, um, I, I did internal you know, validity check, meaning that I actually went back to, um, to the um, people who I surveyed, I showed them the final results and asked them whether they would agree or not at the end. And uh, this was also presented to um, the uh, tourism industry, the luxury tourism industry in a big conference in Deauville uh, in March. And um, people didn't, I mean, at least people were not angry or disagree with what was shown. Um, and, uh, and I will present it in Walpole in London in a couple of weeks, uh, you know, to expose that to all the people in the luxury industry, uh, I mean practitioners. Uh, so that, all that is to get this external validity that is very hard to, um, to check in qualitative studies. So, so that's about my presentation. Um, I, I still want to thank my, my sponsor uh, because they paid the flight, so... Uh, <laughs> so travel <laughs> I have to quote them, you know. So, um, no, no, but I mean, honestly, I think what is very interesting is like what we speak here in this conference is about collaboration between the industry and us. Um, and uh, that was the first time that I actually had, a, uh, you know, 
a clever company, a clever practitioner uh, asking really, you know me, okay, I, I acknowledge that what you do is maybe weird. Maybe I don't, I, I haven't shown him the Excel sheets, okay, because he would like, but, uh, but the fact that he was like, if you do something in a scientific way, it's going to be much more powerful than if we just, you know, do something on, uh, with an intern uh, on a sheet of paper in the company. So I, I really think this is, uh, this is great. I encourage you to, uh, to network, to do that with uh, other uh, industries. I mean, LVMH people, they are here, so you can, you can push for studies. No, but I think it's, it's valuable in both cases because um, as a researcher, you get access to people you would not have access to. And I think that as a company, you have a, a former cheaper than a McKinsey study, uh, some very interesting results. <laughs> so thank you for your attention. And uh, I don't know if we have questions.